Hi everyone, I'm Sarah and today's video is going to be all about how to get your perfect foundation. So we're going to go through skin prep, priming the skin, applying the foundation and also concealer and powder. So I hope that you guys find this video really helpful and learn a few tips and tricks. So the first thing that we're going to start out with is actually prepping the skin. People will forget how important it is to make sure that you've got a really great base to start out with before your foundation. You're never going to get a really flawless finish with your foundation if you don't have a really flawless finish to your skin. So you need to be able to get the texture of your skin looking as good as possible. Make sure you've got a really great skincare regime consisting of a cleanser, a moisturizer and an exfoliant. These are the three main basics that you definitely need to have. So I've already cleansed my skin and now I'm going to go in with a peel pad. This here is the Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Peel and this is in the Extra Strength Formula. So what this is going to do is just help refine any dead skin cells and just help to give my skin a much more even texture and it will make my makeup go on a lot smoother. So with this treatment how it works is you have two steps. So you have step one and step two and they come in a little sheet like this. So a little towelette that you just wipe all over the skin. So I'm just using step one. Now you can bring this here all down onto your neck and decolletage if you want to because it does have really great anti-aging benefits as well or if you get breakouts there as well it's definitely a great idea to use your peel on those areas but I have just fake tanned my skin last night so I don't want to remove the tan so I won't be exfoliating in that area and then with this you just make sure you've covered every bit of your skin and then after that you just leave the peel on for two minutes before before you follow with step two. So I'm not going to just bore you and leave you guys here while this is on. I'll leave it on for two minutes and then I'll come back and I'll do step two. Okay so now that peel has been on my skin for two minutes I'm going to then follow with step two. What step two does is it neutralizes all of the acids that we put on our skin in step one and then it also infuses the skin with lots of potent anti-aging and antioxidant ingredients. Even if you are young it's not going to be too anti-aging that you can't use it. It's just going to help as a really great prevention which is always great. Your step two comes exactly the same in your little toilet and all you have to do is just massage this onto the skin as we did in step one. And that's it, our skin is now all nice and exfoliated so we're ready to moisturize. So for moisturizer I'm going to use the Kate Somerville Nourish Moisturizer. This is a really nice lightweight gel type texture. So I have combination to oily skin so this here is a nice cream because it's not too rich for my skin and it's going to absorb nice and quickly so then my makeup will sit nicely on over the top. You really have to take your own individual skin type into account when choosing a moisturizer for your skin. If you're more on the drier side you're probably going to want to have a more more of a richer cream because your skin is lacking in oil you probably need those extra oils in your moisturizer in order for your skin to feel nice and hydrated enough something like this cream may not be rich enough for you if you are really particularly dry so make sure you're choosing your moisturizer based on your skin it's such a great feeling when you just put your moisturizer on and your skin feels so much more plump and hydrated so that's really what's going to make a great base for for your foundation. Those two steps, so exfoliating and moisturizing, are really going to help your makeup to stay on a lot longer throughout the day and go on a lot more smooth and flawless. Now at the moment I am having a particularly good skin week. I haven't got a lot of breakouts. I've got a little bit of redness here but for me my skin is pretty flawless at the moment. That is a real bonus. It can be a lot harder coming to concealing blemishes and things like that. If your skin is really nice and smooth texture your foundation is going to tend to go on a lot better over the top of it but I have been really looking after my skin at the moment and it's made a huge difference in the appearance of my skin so I'm just going to zoom you in a little bit just so then I can show you a little bit closer up how we would do primer and foundation okay so now we're up close and personal I'm going to talk to you about primer so this is the hourglass veil primer so this is what I'm going to use on my skin when you're thinking about a primer you want to think about the overall finish that you're wanting your foundation to look like. So there's lots of different types of primers out there. 
for different concerns. So this one here is designed to help to control oil throughout the day, help your makeup really to last on the skin, which is what all primers essentially are designed to do. But it also just really helps in humid, hot climates. It's just a really great one for really making sure you're locking your foundation in. You can also get primers that are really great for anti-redness or you can get primers for brightening the skin, so illuminating primers. You can get primers that are pore blurring. So there's lots of different options out there. So you've just got to think about what the main um, concerns are that you're particularly wanting to concentrate on. You can layer up your primers too if you do want to address more than one specific concern. So say if you wanted to blur your pores but you wanted a more brightened glowy finish to your skin, you could do a pore blurring primer first and then follow with your illuminating primer. Oh, the one step I have forgotten to do is eye cream. You want to make sure you're using a good eye cream as well because your concealer won't sit nice if you're not using a good eye cream. So I'm using the Clinique Pep Start Eye Cream and this one here is just a really nice brightening eye cream and it's not too heavy which is good. So it will absorb quite fast. With your eye cream you just want to take a pinhead size amount and then just tap it into the skin. Okay, so now we've done everything we can to get our skin nice and prepped for our foundation. So now it's time to go in with the foundation. Now, when you're thinking about buying a foundation, there's three main things you want to consider. What your skin type is, so if you have oily combination or dry skin. What kind of a finish you want, so if you want a matte finish, a dewy finish, or more of a natural skin finish. And then also what sort of coverage you're after. So if you want a sheer coverage, a medium coverage, or a full coverage. So for me, I'm using a medium buildable to a full coverage foundation. And this one has a satin finish, so somewhere in the middle of between your matte and your dewy. So it's sort of just more of a natural skin type finish and I have a combination to oily skin. So I'm using the Makeup Forever HD foundation and this is in the shade Y255. This is a great color match for me when I have my fake tan on. With your foundation there's three main methods of application and I think I'll do a separate video based on the different tools that you can use to apply your foundation. For me today I'm going to be using the Makeup Geek foundation stippling brush. And this one here is just really good because it's nice and dense and so it gives a nice full coverage to your foundation and it's easy to blend out. So what I like to do is just put my foundation on the back of my hand and then just apply it onto the skin in little dots. Now with foundation you always want to start out with less product because you can always go in with more. If you try and put too much product on straight away it's going to be impossible to blend so you want to start out with less product and then you can build it up and put more on. So I usually just buff this into my skin using sweeping type motions. So I've just applied a little bit more foundation and I'm just going to buff that into the skin now as well. The great thing about a buildable coverage is that you can apply as much as you need to to get the ideal coverage that you're looking for. And you want to make sure you're always blending down into the neck as well. You want to make sure you're getting right in around the hairline, even though when you're blonde like me this may mean you'll get a little bit of a discoloration on your hairline, but your hair covers it when it's down anyway. So there you go, you can see that the foundation is looking pretty good, I'll zoom in a little bit more. So you can see. Pretty good coverage. I do like to have a bit more of a full coverage than what some people would, but if you do prefer less coverage, you just need to apply less product. Now the sun's come out, I'm just 
changed up the lighting completely so sorry about that but now I'm just gonna go on with concealer so I'm using the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer this here is a great concealer I've been using this one for a while and it's really nice under the eyes so you want your concealer to be a couple of shades lighter than your foundation just so it's nice and brightening and then when you apply it you want to bring it down in a triangle type shape so this is the sort of shape that you want your concealer to go in because it will just illuminate the under eye area and brighten it a lot more. If you just do a semicircle of concealer under the eyes, it can actually have the opposite effect of trying to camouflage your dark circles. It can actually enhance the appearance of your dark circle because you're just applying that highlighting product just in that area and it can still give you that same shape and it doesn't help to diminish the appearance of your dark circles. So that's why this triangle method works really well. And it probably does look like I'm applying a whole lot of concealer, but it's actually not that much. I never dip my wand back into the concealer when I'm using it, because otherwise that would be far too much product. The amount that you get on the doe foot is actually more than enough. So then to blend that out, I just like to take the Real Techniques Contour Brush. This brush, because of its shape and size, I just find it's really good to get in there and just blend everything out together. And the reason I put it on my lids as well is just to neutralize any color on the eyelids because I do get quite veiny lids. So with this brush it's so easy to blend, that's all done on that side. And voila! Then sometimes what I like to do as well is go back in with my Makeup Geek brush and then just blend those two sides together just to make sure that it's really well blended and there's no harsh lines. Okay, so now we just have to set everything down with powder. And today I'm going to be using the Australis Fresh and Flawless Press Powder and this is in the shade Natural. As you can see, mine is very well loved. And I'm just going to use a very dirty um, Sigma tapered face brush, which is a F25 brush to apply that. I like to load my brush up with powder and then just pat it onto the skin as opposed to using sweeping motions. This here is just going to help set everything down but without moving any of the product underneath. Because I get quite oily throughout the day as well, I do tend to be someone that does load up on the powder because I prefer a more matte finish and it helps to prevent any shine throughout the day. And to prevent creasing of the under eye area, you also want to take some of your powder and just apply that under the eyes. You can use a completely separate powder for the under eye area, um, one that's a bit more brightening, but if you don't have that sort of a powder on hand, there's no reason why you can't use your powder that you would use to set your foundation. That is our base done. So there we have it. Flawless foundation, concealer and powder. So now you are free to add whatever else you want to onto your makeup. If you did enjoy this video, please like the video. Please leave me a comment on what other videos you would like to see from me. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.